What's up everyone, Karu here from Tennis HQ. Hope you guys are doing great. And today we have another game analysis. We're gonna talk about JJ Wolf. Uh, I'm sure if you're following the US Open, you've seen the press about, <laughs> about him and his mullet. Uh, he's a very interesting character. He's actually, I, I believe he's gonna be really good for tennis. Um, and once he, you know, obviously break through top 100 and plays in, on the big stage more often. And I know him personally, you know, we've played against each other uh, back in the pros. Uh, a couple of years ago, it was right before he actually, you know, started really doing well on, on the pro tour and eventually turned pro from from Ohio State. And this is his Grand Slam debut, and he's already in the third round. So cl clearly, he likes a big stage. He likes playing um, the big tournaments. He doesn't shy away from it. And I think we're going to see him a lot more. Uh, so I figure I'll we'll talk a little bit about his game and just personally, like, you know, the way I see. Uh, he's his game style playing out. He's not as talked about as you know the Taylor Fritzes and the Tiafos and uh, some of the younger guys, um, the American younger guys. But I think he's probably the most exciting uh, tennis player to come out of you know the U.S. in a long time. And I think if he makes it, it's going to bring a lot of attention to tennis again. So um, hopefully he does. And so we're just going to dive right, right into it. And just a reminder: if you're not subscribed yet, please subscribe to the channel. Um, it really helps us uh, put out more content. Uh, we really appreciate you guys that have been subscribing recently um, and everyone who's been with us since the beginning. So please hit the subscribe button. So starting with his positives, um, he's an aggressive baseliner. He likes dominating the point with, the, um, with his ground strokes. Um, he, he does have a great backhand actually compared to, you know, most of the Americans struggle a little bit of it on the backhand side. I think Taylor Fritz has a good back and uh, Brandon Akashima actually has a good back end, but most of them have, you know, iffy back ends. Um, but he, you know, he loves to dominate with the forehand. Um, he doesn't have necessarily the most, the heaviest forehand compared to, again, again, comparing to the Americans that you tend to be a little more whippy with the forehand. He drives, drives it a little bit more. But overall is that game style of like trying to dominate from the baseline, hit the ball hard. Um, and he hits the ball really hard. <laughs> and so that's something that um, is actually exciting to watch. And it's a little bit different, again, from most Americans these days. But it's like fresh to watch. I think, um, you know, I said it a little bit earlier. I think he has, it, it, it's comparable to Agassi, the way he plays. It's not necessarily, I'm not talking about results, but just the way he, you know, carries himself on the court. Uh, loves to take the returns early. He loves to take cuts from both sides of, uh, of the court, and in, in, in his game style, like the way he hits his strokes, it's like it's not necessarily the most effortless, but he does have this thing called displacement. That's how, how you would describe his game. He, his strokes are not necessarily the shortest. They're not like too compact, but man, he just gets so much momentum with his with both both wings, forehand or back, and gets so much momentum. Um, on his shots that like he the ball just comes off hot so um from the ground from the ground from the baseline he he just creates so much pace um and displacement with his shots that it's very difficult to play his forehand because it's a little bit bigger and the, the way he's, he takes it back it's hard to read where he's going he can kind of go in any direction with it especially if he's playing from the, the back inside of the court so, you know, you kind of get stuck on the other side. It's like, where is it going to go? There's no cues to, you oh, know, maybe you can read a little bit. He just like goes for it and you're kind of stuck on your split step. So it's really complicated to, to beat him if he's playing you from the, the, the back inside using the forehand. So, um, but in general, he's just, you know, again, good ball striker uh, and creates easy pace. And he also does that on his serve. He serve, I mean, he's, he's six feet tall. Um, but he, you know, constantly hits the, the, his serve close to 130 or above 130. Uh, the first serve and his second serve is pretty big too. So he just has power. He's just a powerful guy. Um, I mean, if you watch him him play, like that's what you're gonna take away from. He's like, oh my god, this, this kid hits the ball hard. Um, his serve is really, really good. Um, I think he, you know, he can use a little more variation with it. Um, we'll talk a little bit about about it in a second. But just overall, I mean, he gets so many free points off his serve. He gets, you know, if the match plays quick, if things are going quickly, where he's, you know, just feeling good, hitting the ball hard, it's very tough for the opponent uh, to, to stay in the match. Like, if he's getting a lot of free points on his serve, you're not making him play a lot, and he's just, like, teeing off. 
you know, every first ball, off their second serve return, all that stuff. If he's just going at it, the match goes away quick. You see that, like sometimes he scores, like goes from zero to four zero, and like this, because you're you're a little cold. I know because I've played him. Uh, you're a little cold, and you're just coming off firing, and you're like, what the hell's going on? Um, so it's tough. It's tough to play him, he, and, and he just, you know, again, he just hits the ball really big. So um, you have to be on your toes from from the start. But I think his biggest upside is just his mindset. He believes he can beat anyone, and he's the, he's a player who doesn't shy away from big moments. The bigger the stage, the better he plays. The more, I think the harder he hits. Um, so I think that's his biggest upside. If I had to say, you know, if I had to give his, his, the biggest compliment I get, you can give to a player is that they're they're strong in in here. Um, so he just, you know, he he just has complete belief that he can beat everyone. He plays Medvedev today on Ash. I'm really excited to to watch that to see if he can if he can take him out. But even if he can, I know he's gonna get in get on the court fully believing he can win. So um, JJ does not shy away from a big big moment and that's that's a great thing um he's obviously coming up on in the rankings he's still not top 100 but i'm sure he's gonna break it soon and you know obviously the bigger the higher his rank is the bigger the stage is and some players can get a little tight about those things and, and not necessarily embrace it as much as as he does and he just embraces that moment and i think that's his by far his best quality he you know competes really hard and believes he's going to beat anyone he's playing so that's a great combination he has incredible power great great strokes he's fit he can play um but you know there's a lot of players who have good ball striking and hit the ball well but um that that belief that you can be the best and that, that you can beat anyone really takes you to a different level and i think he's already at that level and that's in my in my perspective his his greatest asset just complete self-belief that he's going to take everyone out it can come off a little cocky for some people but um you know what i mean doesn't matter what you think as long as he's winning so it's one of those things like i, I think in tennis you have to be a little cocky you have to be um you know it's a fine line between cocky and self-belief but like you have to you have to write it and and he does that really well so i think um, we're going to see him a lot more and and because of that that self-belief not just because he hits the ball big because a lot of people hit the ball big a few things that I see that he still needs to develop is uh, one on his serve I think he gets a little bit too predictable with it um, he loves cutting it he loves the the white on the on the do side and the T on the add side um, because he has so much rack ahead speed he cuts the ball I mean the ball just moves um, but he ends up going for that one a lot um, he tries to go to vary and you can see going T and wide, but they aren't as effective uh, yet. Obviously he hits aces there because people end up covering the, the, the slice serve a little bit more, but I think he can, he can use a little more variation on, on the serve, on the first serve. And the same on the second serve, like he, it's just, I think because of his motion, he struggles a little bit getting like the action for the kick. Uh, if you see his second serve, he kind of like goes with a little more slice then then kick and i think he needs to add not that having the slice is bad but adding the kick will be really important for him especially because he can use it as a first serve too he has so much action he can open up the court with a kick on the ad side um, but he does struggle creating that 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 kick and then his serve can become a little predictable you know if i've talked to people who've played him and they're like yeah he has a great serve but you know you, you kind of get used to his patterns um and if he's not 100 percent on you're you're actually gonna have you're gonna have a racket on it so sometimes you can just solve everything with power but obviously he's young and i'm sure he's gonna be working on it and he has the confidence to to you know create those 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 types of serves it's not gonna be a problem um, but that's what i see on a service and another thing that i i've watched him play enough to to know and i've played against him um, when he's on and he's on top of you and he's, the, the match has been playing fast and he's like hitting the, the ass out of the ball, <laughs> um, he is really good. But then sometimes, I don't know if he gets a little bit tight or, you know, if he wants to pull back a little bit and not make too many mistakes, maybe he missed a few before. Um, he, he gets a little bit too passive and then he doesn't do much with the ball um, during those, 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 it's like a few games, it's like a little spurt of like, 
he he's just kind of putting the ball on the court, but his rally ball um, isn't as um, effective as when he's like really hitting it. So I think he needs to just find a, a like an in between where he's not necessarily just going for it, but he's still kind of creating a good a good shot off of of a you know a, just a rally ball. I think he every once in a while he it's it's weird. It happens for like a couple games, and then he like brings it back on and he starts going for it again and he finds it but there is like this moments uh, during the match that he will play a little bit too passive and then he's not very effective doing that then the other guy kind of takes over and he still struggles a little bit um you know he moves quickly but he's not necessarily the best defensive player yet um so i think like but he comes from just his rally shot becomes a little bit too slow he gets a little bit too passive about it but when he's fully swinging at it and it's not like he's missing a lot he can he can stay on the rally when he's fully swinging at it um so that's when he's the most effective when he's being a little too passive i don't think he's very effective and i think um it's easy to put him on the run and make him come come up with like you know defensive shots and i don't i don't think he is that good there yet uh, but again it's something that easy to work work on uh, just has maybe watch himself play during those moments um, but he does like i said before because he has so much confidence he he's able to bring it back really quickly he'll play two game two games playing like that and next game he's just like comes off firing and he finds it again so it's like that's just kind of really where he he struggles a little bit that I, I feel like he becomes a little too passive and not too effective on the court and the last thing just you know a little bit of variation i think um you know he hits super hard all the time um you can maybe play with the spins a little more the heights um to open up the court a little bit better and also getting to the net i don't think he i mean for how powerful he hits i don't think he gets to the net as much as he should i mean everyone is so quick these days you, you actually have to be able to put volleys away so i think he struggles a little bit with that um not necessarily like that he doesn't know how to volley or something but he just like he's so used to i think just hitting the winners from back there um that he like ends up not having that attitude of moving into moving to the net um but i think with time and obviously the higher his ranking is the better the players he's playing against so he's gonna need to um, be a little more confident going in i think sometimes when he goes in he actually takes a little bit away from his shot and then he leaves a, an easier passing shot but just when he really goes for it and you, you see that the, the opponent opening up the slice get to the net put the volley away it will be much easier i think that's something he, he's going to need to work a little, on it a little bit he doesn't need to take the ball earlier i think he has just enough power to like load up and hit it but you know getting to the net's gonna once he does that i think he's gonna really take his game to the next level all right so there you have it this is my analysis of jj wolf's game it's kind of like more of an overview of, you know, I've seen him play a lot, I've played against him, um, so I kind of understand um, the nuances of his game. And I think, again, incredibly powerful, a lot of self-belief, and, you know, just, I think he's just an exciting player for tennis. Um, a student needs to work on a few things, on getting to the net, or on being a little more consistent sometimes, but overall, I just like a fun guy to watch to to watch and i think good for tennis i think the, the more characters we get um that are just too boring too plain um it's good for the sport it's good for i mean at the end of the day tennis is entertainment and we need entertainers and i think a lot of people are going to enjoy watching him play uh, we'll see how he does today against medvedev excited to watch that and if you're not subscribed yet please subscribe it really helps us and give it a thumbs up to this, this video if you if you found it helpful um let let us know in the comments if who who you want to watch next on our game analysis i'm going to try to watch today a little bit of medvedev and jj i think i'm going to do medvedev next but if there's someone else let us know in the comments below and visit my and follow us on social media at my tennis hq and at my tennis hq underscore on twitter and i'll see you guys in the next one